Hello, everyone. It's Lydia with the Oneness Junkie podcast and YouTube channel. And today I'm sitting here with Kimberly Miller from Summer House Houston. Hi, Kimberly. Hello, Lydia. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity. I really appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. I look forward to learning more about Summer House. I haven't learned a whole lot, but that's the fun of actually interviewing the, the various nonprofits and people that I'm interested in getting the word out about what they do. So in order to get started, can we just get a little bit of background about you and how you got involved with Summer House before we introduce Summer House to the audience? Of course, most definitely. Uh, so I am a mom of five teens and also a dog mom of three rescues. So um, finding the time to get involved in the community can be challenging in some aspects just because schedules uh, being what it is. But I was fortunate to be introduced to Summer House a couple of years ago and uh came into it as the aspect of the community relations director. So that has afforded me the opportunity to be in the neighborhoods uh, and surrounding greater Houston area, connecting and sharing with people more about Summer House. And it's been a true delight to, to have that opportunity. That's great. Did you have any connection with the IDD community before you met Summer House? And my mom was a special ed teacher. Uh, so when I was in her classroom, I had the opportunity to be a part and with her students and just had bonds that um, have long since, you know, stuck with me in the memories that were made there and just seeing the impact as a teacher she had on these individuals and not just the individuals, but the families as well, too. It was lasting uh, memories for myself and just the uh, relationships that she had developed over the years. That's great. And just to help put a foundation in place, because I just used an acronym, IDD. I didn't know the IDD acronym until you told me when we were on the phone. So could you explain what the IDD acronym is? Yes. Uh, IDD stands for Intellectual Development Disabilities. So that spans a broad range. Um, it can be someone with autism, someone with Downs, but that's, uh, I guess, a bit of a blanket identification for individuals with intellectual development disabilities. Okay, great. So you started with Summer House when? Oh, wow. Uh, two years ago, actually, uh, was my initial start. And the minute walking into the door and being greeted by the members there, it was just a feeling of belonging and acceptance. These individuals have such great... Um, desires to be able to be a part of the community and for the community to accept them. Oftentimes, you know, it's referred to as a underserved population. And particularly with Summer House, we support uh, the individuals post high school. So after they age out of uh, the school systems, uh, they look for programs like Summer House to be able to connect just to see what the next step is for them in their young adulthood. And that's where we try to walk alongside them and support them through one-on-one um, -on -one relationships. We have a very small four-to-one ratio uh, program to staff or members to staff, that is. So we really do try to keep it personable. And it's not just the members that we serve, but also the families as well, too. Okay. So let's go back. I like for the nonprofit to be understood from its origin. So Absolutely. can you just go back and actually share with us how, where did it get generated? How did it become a nonprofit? Why did it become a nonprofit? Let's start there and then we'll move more into who you serve and what you're, um, what you're contributing to, to this population and, and so forth. We'll go deeper. Okay, yes. Uh, Summer House was actually founded by a brilliantly deep hearted individual named Donna Frische. Her daughter, Summer, uh, as I mentioned, had aged out of the school system. And so she was searching for a program for Summer to transition into and just couldn't find the right fit for for summer. So she took it upon herself to initiate uh, Summer House Houston, which started out in a tiny bungalow spot in the Heights and 
grew overnight and uh, basically grew out of the building, the facility that they had there, because I think it was probably capped at about 10 to 12 individuals. So uh, the demand was so great for it. So we found a little plot of land in Spring Branch about five years ago and took a leap of faith and built our, our building, our campus in Spring Branch, where we reside at now. And as a result, we've been able to increase our attendance or increase our enrollment and be able to serve more individuals uh, through our not only day program, uh, but also through our supported employment services, which provides job coaching and vocational placement for individuals. Okay. So what year was that, that the Summer House Origin started? Uh, it started 12 years ago. So, and then our most recent, as I said, um, building dedication that we just had a couple of weeks ago allowed for a new expansion at our existing campus, which provides more classroom space, office space to better serve our individuals and provide the vocational uh, through our supported employment services as well. Okay, great. So I'm hoping that people who are, you know, maybe subscribers to my podcast are just being informed to learn about new things related to this population that you're able to serve. So can you let us know um, what exactly kind of just get into it about what exactly does it do? And then how do the people have their days? And then we're going to ask you to describe the other side of it about who you're also serving in this matchmaking process that you have? Yes, um, it is, as I mentioned, a day program that runs Monday through Friday. So a typical day at Summer House when members arrive on campus is they'll connect with their groups and their schedules. Uh, they work together as a group to determine where they're going to volunteer at, where they're going to interact at, what their social aspect of the day is going to be. They work together to meal plan, uh, all types of interesting things that sometimes we take for granted as individuals, but these uh, members and uh, their group leader program staff work together to be out and about in the communities. And they do that uh, for a lot of different reasons. Obviously one, uh, to develop their interpersonal skills, their social skills, their vocational skills. And that can be done uh, through volunteering at maybe the Houston Food Bank, uh, some uh, Main Street Ministries. They have over 20 plus volunteer sites where they are out and about. And it's not just uh, supporting their pursuits of being in the community, but it's also for the community to see that it's important that these individuals are acknowledged and accepted for who they are. And so it's in many ways, educating the community on what these individuals have to offer. Okay. And I heard you use the term age out, but can you get more specific about what are the ages from the program? Like when can you enter and when do you, does the program no longer serve you based on your age? Yes. Um, so aging out means uh, basically in Texas, uh, when they're leaving the school, the public school system or the school system, uh, post high school, roughly 18 to 19 years old, uh, individuals can join programs such as Summer House. There's others out there as well too, but for instance, Summer House ages uh, range from 18 to early 30. So the median age is around 25. Okay, now can they, do they age out of Summer House at 30? I mean, what happens to them after 30? Well, that's the beauty of it because we're such a young program, you know, our I guess original uh, individuals that joined us 12 years ago are now, you know, at that older age. And we're just trying to determine what's the best avenue for them. Ideally, uh, finding more vocational support for them so they're able to work uh, more than necessarily being in the day program is one option as well, too, though. Okay, good. So, um, so you help them with vocational skills and communication and social skills at the program, but then you also find them work, right? The vocational part of it. Um, is this the time where we would be talking about how, who you're matching them with and how that transition happens? Absolutely. So uh, through their time in the communities and their volunteering, uh, those skills are being developed and we're also honing in on what their interests are. I mean, what 
area or arena of work they would like to be in and what type of uh, qualifications or skill sets they have for those jobs. So while that's all undergoing or behind the scenes, uh, calculating and helping support not only the members of Summer House, but also their families as they make that transition. We're also looking to find employers that make that uh, connection and that are interested in uh, being a part of our summer house uh, employment program as well. So, and we, because we have job coaches that can be on site with the members, they will work with them at their job to help uh, develop those skills that might be needed or might be missing to carry out the task uh, by their employer. Wow. So like the employer will say this, I have these, you know, sanitization, mm-hmm. uh, sanitation, you know, utensils for sterilization but I don't have anyone to train you. So the staff goes over there and kind of works with them for a certain amount of time till they're kind of ready to do it on their own. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. We have a phenomenal supported employment service group that uh, will literally be alongside with them, uh, helping them to determine what, what they might be lacking in, maybe finding better ways to achieve whatever those goals are. And obviously staying in contact with the employer as well, too, just to make sure uh, they're supported as well. So we have um, clients that work for HEB, uh, TJ Maxx, um, Goodwill. There's a range of opportunities there, but we're always in need of additional employers and companies that will walk alongside with us and be matched up with one of our clients. That's great. Are there any incentives? Uh, this is a random question. I don't even know. You know <laughs> this is just coming to random my mind. <laughs> no, it's just coming to my mind. Like I'm a, I'm like an innovation type concept person. So, uh, do the do the corporations have any incentive to um, hire this particular population in order to? For the, I, I want to educate the employer so that if they didn't know that mm-hmm. this could benefit them in some way, how they would want to be matched up with you so that they could benefit. So let's talk about that. Most definitely. There are tax benefits to that uh, by okay. hiring individuals through the IDD community. And we've been able to walk through that with employers, just what that looks like and uh, supporting them as they make those determinations. But yes, that is a huge benefit uh, to be able to hire within the IDD community and uh, the tax um, support that's, that's provided. That's with amazing. Them. I mean, it's yeah. a win-win. It's a win-win. Absolutely. Relationship, right? Indeed, so, indeed. Can you um, tell us some? I mean, because when you and I were talking, I was asking you like, what do you need? You know, what can we talk about? And you know, you said you're always looking for great employer relationship opportunities to match the right um, individuals into those programs. So let's talk about some dream or where you've heard of successful things, um, successful employer situations. Maybe you don't have those in your repertoire right now, but you're looking to acquire those relationships. What are some of the industries or the job possibilities so we can spark some thoughts for any listener who might work for a corporation in the HR department that wants to consider where they can find a fit in their organization. So let's kind of help them brainstorm by talking about this. Uh, Most definitely. We have some very creative individuals that are looking for jobs from graphic design to marketing to variations of business aspects. So we are always looking for those companies that are willing to take on an individual that, you know, with IDD and be able to uh, support them along the way. And like I said, with Summer House, we're, we are supporting and hanging out with them and uh, encouraging them as well, too. So individuals um, that not necessarily just want to be in a food service industry, but want to be in a different, um, we have individuals that are uh, teacher's aides at some of the schools that have always dreamed to be, uh, excuse me, have always dreamed to be in a classroom setting that we've been able to fulfill those wishes for them. And uh, some of our alumni have graduated to move on to those roles that they've never thought would be possible, but because of the uh, training and the support they've been given through our summer house and our job coaches, they're now living out those dreams. So great. And um, when we were talking, we were talking about hospital systems. What what have you found that the hospital systems have been able to um, place people and have, you know, jobs? Yes, we've actually had uh, 
I know at least one individual from Summer House that worked in the medical center, just, you know, supporting in the labs, uh, more admin type work along those lines. And uh, again, flourished in that role and still probably is in that role, to be quite honest, has been a while <laughs> since checked in on her. So, so hospitals, yes. Uh, working within even, as I mentioned earlier, uh, just some of the food service industries, whether it be the cafes, uh, we have some individuals at the Chick-fil-A's, those type of opportunities as well, too. But yes, yeah. and so I many different uh, skill sets that are involved in that. Yeah. And I mean, I used to be a medical sales rep and there's, you know, the departments like the laundry department, you mm -hmm. were telling me that some of the types of jobs that these individuals love are some of that predictable, repetitive yeah. type work. So mm -hmm. talk about that so people can come up with ideas for their companies. Absolutely. So um, repetition is a great way as, uh, to describe it. Uh, assembly line uh, format, that type of thing. Uh, we originally, one of the jobs at Summer of Summer House, our original founder, enjoyed was shredding. So we uh, had a shred business within Summer House called Shred for Independence. So it just gave our members the opportunity who love the repetition of the paper going in and the sound to be able to enjoy uh, carrying out the task. So that's just one example. Uh, others, you know, rolling the silverware at the restaurants, that's another option. Stocking uh, the inventory in the pantries at, you know, some of the shelters, the food pantries that we work at as well, too. So repetition is great uh, for many of our members, but they also can branch out and take on other tasks. But that's where the job coaches come in handy because they create these uh, routines for them. So they're uh, comfortable with the situation that they're in from the workforce. When right out of college, one of my first jobs was um, representing a company that was a labor company. And so they were doing things like warehouse assembly, putting products in packages and yes. then having the packages go down the assembly line. And it was the same thing. You're putting the same thing in the box. Sure. You fold it a certain way and move it down the line. So um, just anyone out there who has a repetitive style mm -hmm. job, you know, reach out to Summer House Houston and see if there's a fit, see if there's a need and see if there's a fit. So is there anything else that we should talk about related to Summer House to let the world know <laughs> what Summer House is up to? Well, yes. Thank you, Lydia, again, for the opportunity. Uh, we are uh, fundraising as many nonprofits uh, this day and age is finding it more and more challenging. But that being said, we're very hopeful for the opportunities that our fundraising allows for scholarships for individuals that may not otherwise be able to uh, take on or be a part of the program. So that being said, uh, if you visit our website at uh, www.summerhousehouston.org. Uh, there's a list of upcoming events from a uh, Crawfest that we're hosting on April 18th to a golf tournament on May 6th, and then also our fall gala on October 7, 17th. All that information can be found at our website at summerhousehouston.org. Wonderful. Let's let's go talk about funding for a little bit before we wrap up this. Um, this is a big part of nonprofits. So are you um, primarily government grant funded or individual funding? Where do most of your funds come from when you're fundraising? Sure. Um, well, fundraising, we... Um, that's a great question because we are a nonprofit. You know, we utilize our fundraising through our communities. Uh, we have oftentimes, you know, opportunities for corporate sponsorships to be a part of our events. Uh, our families of Summer House have been fantastic about it. Um, our neighbors of Spring Branch, uh, Spring Branch uh, District are super great about supporting us as well. So but just trying to walk alongside and build those community relations uh, with individuals and companies, really crucial this day and age now more than ever for our fundraising and the opportunities yeah. that it benefits for. You know, I used to do some marketing for a nonprofit church, a, a nonprofit um, non-denominational church. And what they would do is they would take their funds and they would donate to outside nonprofits that okay. they vetted yes. to extend accentu um, like an extension of the church of focus was to help 
the community, but through something like Summer House, because the church wasn't in the business of what the Summer House does, but they didn't mind passing funds through to help the nonprofit. So do you get also churches to donate? Because I'm trying to inspire churches if they're looking <laughs> for a place yes. to donate to in the local area. Yes, I love, yes, I love the opportunities that abound within our churches, our synagogues, those that are uh, looking to, you know, maybe expand their missions uh, outside of the church and uh, that type of realm. But yes, we love to walk alongside those individuals and those organizations that do want to support. And, you know, at any given time, I would welcome and encourage those churches or companies or corporations that want to find out more besides just visiting the website, just to, you know, reach out to us and take a tour and see what we're all about. Come meet our members and, you know, join us on one of our outings at one of our volunteer sites. And I think you'll really be enlightened by these individuals and just how fortunate and blessed we are to be a part of yeah. some else. Yeah. And I mean, th like I said, this is a global platform that we're speaking on. So if there's even any organizations or even an individual who's moved, maybe they're outside of the state or the city and they still want to support the mission because maybe they had a child or maybe they had a, a family member that they knew the value of what you're providing. I just encourage you to consider supporting organizations like Summer House in order to help the community thrive. And if if I'm not mistaken, that community is getting larger and larger and larger. You know, it just seems like you're hearing more about Asperger's all, um, uh, autism spectrum. You know, there's these terms that, you know, back in the 70s, you know, we weren't really talking about it that much. You know, yeah. it just seems like it's so prevalent now. No, um, unfortunately, you're correct, Lydia. And just taking, uh, removing the stigma of, you know, the association of these individuals and the marginalized, you know, population that sometimes, you know, resonates when it comes to finding a place in the community and for a community accepting that, you know, we live in a world where we're focusing on inclusivity and we need to make sure every individual has that opportunity to be a part and have a viable job or a viable um, volunteer, you know, shift or whatever it may be, but just acknowledging and respecting that it's just, it's vital now more than ever. Absolutely. And that's a good segue for me to remind everyone that the Oneness Junkie podcast and YouTube channel was created to highlight individuals and or now organizations who are using their time and talents and resources to make the world a better place. And that's why we have an organization like Summer House on the show to help bring a light and a spotlight into more of how people are using their energy to help expand and raise the consciousness of our planet so that we are all helping each other and that we're better together when we work together. Right, Kimberly? Indeed. Indeed. No words have ever been true. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, we're here to spread more compassion and love in the world. And I know that y'all are already doing that. So I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to highlight y'all and share what y'all are up to. And I really hope that, you know, you have a, a fantastic year of fundraising and the, the more funds you get, the more you're able to service the population that you're focused on, right? And yes, most definitely. And again, um, any questions that you guys may have, please feel free to reach out to me as well. My email address is Kimberly at summerhousehouston.org as well. Great. So go ahead and go to www.summerhousehouston.org. I'm sure they have a contact us form on there mm -hmm. and then y'all can get a communication. So um, thank you so much. Do you have anything else you want to say before we say goodbye to the audience? Oh, again, Lydia, I, I appreciate the platform, the opportunity to have this time to chat with you. And I love what you're doing. So kudos to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, we wish everyone the best and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.